The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes, and that Popeye little weather prophet who saw the groundhog this morning and calmly said, Hey, Costello, where in the world have you been? I've been looking for you all day. Oh, Abbott, I'm a very busy man. I spent the whole day in my backyard hanging prunes on my orange tree. <laughs> hanging prunes on your orange tree? Who told you to do that? My gardener. He said the orange tree needed pruning. <laughs> what a dope. Your gardener meant you should uh, get a ladder and saw the limbs. I don't need no ladder. I saw the limbs from my window. Oh, hold on. <laughs> What kind of limbs can you saw from your window? The limbs of Ruby Pultu. She lives next door. No, That's no. my girl, you know. No, 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 I understand. I'm talking about the limbs on your tree. Did you saw the limbs? Certainly I saw the limbs. They was hanging right in front of me. No, 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 you dummy. Yeah, I have cockeyed or something. I saw them. Just a minute. Did you saw them off? Oh, I just told you I saw them off. No, no, Costello. <laughs> you don't saw them on. You saw them off. They was off. How could I see them? Look, because you had to see them when you sawed them. I had to see them when I saw them. What? What kind of English is that? <laughs> Costello, when I say saw, I don't mean the kind of saw you saw when you see. I mean the kind of saw you saw when you saw. Oh, you don't mean the kind of saw you saw when you see. You mean the kind of see you saw when you see saw. Now, now you've got it. Now I've got I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Costello, I, I'm trying to tell you how to prune a tree. Look, Costello, if you want your tree to grow good oranges, it's got to be trimmed before the sap rises. Before the sap rises? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. What time do you get up? Uh, I am. <laughs> Will you talk sense? Look, what kind of oranges grow on your trees? Oh, the regular kind, round ones. No, 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 no. Are they, are they Valencias or naval oranges? Oh, these are naval oranges. How do you know? I saw a sailor picking some. No. <laughs> How can you be so stupid? You can tell the difference between uh, oranges by the color of the juice. Did you ever squeeze one of your oranges? Oh, yeah. And what came out? Milk. Milk? Yeah. How could your oranges have milk in them? I got the trees from a nursery. <laughs> What's wrong with that? All right. Uh, never mind that. What did I tell you? All right, come on. Uh, come on with me, Costello. We're going out in the backyard and look at your tree. Hey, wait a minute. Look out that window. There's a big crow sitting up in your tree. Hey, Abbott, that crow's got a lot of nerve. Hand me my sawed off shotgun. All right, here it is. Hey, wait a minute. This gun hasn't got any uh, handle on it. How do you like that? I sawed off the wrong end. Now, uh, wh watch what you're doing. You're pointing that gun right at me. Do you want to shoot me? Don't worry. Don't worry. I got my finger over the hole. Hey, stand back. Stand back, Abbott. All right. I'm going to teach that crow not to eat my oranges. Watch me get him. Hey, was that a crow? Uh-uh. That was the old buzzer that lives next door. Come on, Costello. Let's see what happened. Costello, that was your neighbor, Mrs. Beanbag. That's the one you shot. And here she comes. Oh! There you are, you little fat assassin. How dare you shoot at me when I was up in that tree putting oranges in my bucket. That'll teach you to keep your bucket out of my tree. <laughs> After all, I'm tired of people stealing my oranges. Your oranges? My oranges! It so happens that your orange tree hangs over into my yard, and the law says that whatever hangs over my fence belongs to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, look at here, Mrs. Beanbag. Did you ever see a fat man standing at a bar? Yes, Chris. what about it? Does the part that hangs over the bar belong to the bartender? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, Costello, apologize to Mrs. Beanbag for knocking her out of the tree. Come well, on. She ought to apologize to me. What did I do? What did you do? You fell on my hedge and bent my verbenias. <laughs> Costello, well, not only stuff? that, you stamped on my... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, listen. What other kind of flowers I got there? Never mind, never mind that. Will you stop fighting with the Stamped on my Holly Huckerson. Never mind. I could say the word. All right, well, just, just don't fight with a lady, please. Yes, young man, you have very bad manners. In my day, men didn't fight with women. In your day, the men were too busy fighting the Indians. <laughs> oh, oh, that did it. I've heard enough. I'm going to call my husband. Homer! Oh, there you are. Homer, I've just been insulted. Come here and speak to this ruffian. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to speak to the... To the... To the... Speak to the... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, All right, I'm, Homer. Uh, we're only on a half hour. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to speak. 
speak to her. Hello, ruffian. Look, uh, Mr. Beanbag, Costello made a very serious mistake. He shot at your wife. Oh, he, he, he made a worse mistake than that. Than that. What could be worse than Costello shooting at your wife? He, he, he missed her. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, Beanbag. You made, you made a worse mistake than that. Yeah, hey, what's that? You married her. <laughs> oh, yeah. He... A homer, a Beanbag. Are you going to stand there while this man insults me? No, I'm not going to stand. Uh, bring me a chair. <laughs> I've had enough of both of you. Mr. Costello, I'm taking you into court. I'll teach you to fire your shotgun at a defenseless woman. All I was doing was picking a few oranges. Picking a few oranges? Now, look here, Mrs. Beanbag. I've been watching you for weeks. I didn't mind when you reached up and took a few oranges for breakfast. I didn't even mind the times when you came out and filled your apron with my oranges. But today, when you climbed my tree with your bucket and hung from a branch by your nose so you could pick with both hands, you not only impute on my sickness grove, but you have filched my marmalade. Thank you, Bud and Lou, for a lot of fun. And now I've got to do a quick switch over into the no fun department. A few words about this current cigarette shortage. No, I'm not going into a lot of long explanation, but I do want to say this on behalf of the makers of camels. They made more camels in 1944 than ever before in their history. And production schedules for 1945 provide for even more. Still, the demand for them cannot be met. But when you do get camels, they're still camels. Rich, full flavor, wonderful, cool mildness. The Camel brand will not be sold down the river. Camels would not be camels if they were made of green, insufficiently cured tobaccos. So every time you buy cigarettes, ask for camels. The mildness and flavor of their costlier, properly aged tobaccos make them worth asking for again and again. C-A-M-E-L-S War or peace, Camel is still Camel. Camel Cigarettes now presents Freddie Rich with a wonderful arrangement of Begin the Begin. Common Pleas is now in session. The case of Mrs. Bessie Beanbag versus Lou Costello. The prisoner is charged with perforating Mrs. Beanbag's bucket. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Beanbag, why can't we drop this case? I didn't mean to shoot at you. Honest, I didn't. I'm a nice little fellow. 
Why, I even leave my chewing gum under theater seats for other people. Please, Mrs. Beanbag. Well, Costello, I'm willing to drop the whole case if you'll pay me 50 cents to get a new bucket. Gee, you're a swell woman. Here's, here's your 50 cents. Uh, uh, no, you don't, Costello. Uh, but let Wait me pay the 50 cents. You'll do nothing of the kind. If you... I said, I said no, this. I, let I, me you, pay her. I said no. Now, listen. If you give that woman that money, it shows you're guilty. We're going to fight this case. I've hired you a lawyer. Grandy, as a lawyer, I am Dandy. Hey, look, it's Kitzel. Yes. Hey, Abbott, now get this guy out of here. I'll get my uncle Artie Stebbins to defend me. This Kitzel ain't no lawyer. Now, now, just a second, just a second, Mr. Can't smell you. Can't smell me? Yes. Costello! All right, well, I have you to know I happen to be one of the greatest legal minds in the world. In my first case, I defended Dreyfus. Alfred Dreyfus of Devil's Island? No, reckless Dreyfus from Coney Island. <laughs> oh, now don't give me that stuff, Kissel. You don't look like a lawyer to me. Oh, Pish Pash, you don't look like a lawyer to me. And why don't I look like a lawyer to you? You've got your hands in your own pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hands in my own pocket. <laughs> what do you know? I'm broke. <laughs> Look, Abbott, please let me pay Mrs. Beanbag the 50 cents and then I can get out of here. <laughs> Who over my dead habeas corpus, Mr. Castillo? Castillo. You know, we can't lose this case. Just remember that old saying, a bird in the hand is work. Go ahead. There's more. <laughs> Everybody Rise, presenting his honor, Judge Sam Quentin Leavenworth. All right, bailiff, bring in the first, bring in the, bring in the next, bring in the, next, the next, bring in the whole case. <laughs> hey, you are now. I am representing the defendant, Mr. Castoria. Now it's Castoria. Yes. <laughs> now, it seems that my client took a shot at a poor defenseless woman while she was picking oranges out of a tree. He knocked her to the ground, ruined her bucket, and did her great bodily injury. The defense rests. <laughs> Kitzel, wait a minute. Whose side are you on? Quiet, Costello. Kitzel knows what he's doing. You say that you know the judge and I are old friends. I call him Morris. Well, Morris will give me the chair. Now, Abbott, <laughs> will you please give Mrs. Beanbag the 50 cents? Mr. Kitzel, you may proceed with your questioning. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Castellanitz... Now, I'm a you're... musician. <laughs> Uh, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your Honor, we plead insanity. <laughs> Kitzel, what's the idea? Costello, he's taking advantage of the law. He's, he's making use of the insanity clause. But I don't believe in sanity clause. <laughs> That's the way it's written. The court finds the defendant, Lou Costello, guilty as charged. He will pay Mrs. Beanbag 50 cents or serve 30 days in jail. Abbott, please let me give this woman her 50 cents. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, sir, you know, because we're going to appeal this case to a higher court. Don't forget the words of that great poet, stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Yes, and don't forget the words of that other great poet, Tom Zizimus. He says, 30 days has September, April, June, and Lou Costello. <laughs> Supreme Court is now in session. First case, Mrs. Beanbag versus Costello. Prisoner will step to the bar. <laughs> Costello, are the chains heavy? Abbott... Right. Would you mind holding up this 500-pound ball? <laughs> Why don't you please let me pay Mrs. Beanbag the 50 cents? Your Honor, I would like to ask my client just one question. Request granted. Thank you. Now, Mr. Cantaloupe, tell oh, the jury, <laughs> where were you on the afternoon of February 1st? I was home. Oh, you poor boy. You should have been with me. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> you know I had two bottles of Sheppening, 
Sepening? Yes. What's sepening? Nothing much. What's happening with you? <laughs> the defense rests. Alcatraz, here I come. Uh, the court has considered the new evidence in this case. Uh, Prisoner Costello, when you fired your shotgun at Mrs. Beanbag, some of the buckshot lodged in the oranges. The woman's husband, Homer Beanbag, ate one of the oranges and died of lead poisoning. Therefore, Lou Costello, you are found guilty of murder in the first degree, and it is the sentence of this court that you shall spend the term of 99 years at hard labor. Costello, do you have any last requests to make before I send you away? Yes, sir. Don't fence me in. <laughs> Responding to hundreds of requests from her camel fans, Connie Haynes repeats her treatment of the trolley song. With my high Dutch collar and my high top shoes and my hair up high up on my head, I went to lose the jolly hour upon the trolley and lost my heart instead. With his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. I started to yen, so I counted to ten, then I counted to ten again. <laughs> clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my hard string. For the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor. Bump, bump, bump went the brake. Thump, thump, thump went my heart string. When he smiled, I could feel the car shake. He tipped his hat and took the seat. He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name. I held my breath. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Flop, flop, flop went the wheel. Stop, stop, stop went my heart string. As he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand. And as if it were planned, he stayed on with me. And it was grand just to stand with his hand holding my Package of camels, please. Certainly, sir. Or would you like a carton? Or a couple of cartons? Wake up, chum. Eight o'clock. <laughs> oh, what a lovely dream. Those good old days. But now, well, let's face it. Camel is a hard brand to get. In spite of the fact that the makers of camels have been turning out more cigarettes than ever before in their history. But when you do get camels, they're still camels. This brand will not be sold down the river. You can count on that. Only the choicer tobaccos, properly aged, go into camels. So every time you buy cigarettes, ask for camels. The mildness and rich, full flavor of their costlier tobaccos make them worth asking for again. And again. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels. War or peace, camel is still camel. Abbott, Abbott, why? Will you please get me off this rock pile? Costello, why are you always complaining? You should be thankful that I got myself a job as guard so I could be with you. Mrs. Beanbag to see prisoner Costello. Oh, Mr. Costello, there's been a terrible mistake. My husband Homer didn't die of lead poisoning after all. The doctors removed all the buckshot. Thank heavens, Homer got the lead out. <laughs> I'm so happy. Tomorrow morning, you can walk out of here a free man. A guard, put the prisoner in his cell until morning. All right. Costello, in you go. Abbott. 
Abbott. What's the matter now? I don't want to spend the night in this cell. The place is full of rats. Don't be afraid. I'm here. I know it, but it's the little rats I'm afraid of. <laughs> Abbott! Abbott! Now Come I Come back here now! There's another guy in my cell. Look at the looks of the guy. That's your cellmate. That's your cellmate. What's the matter? He'll be glad to have you for company. Uh, see you later, Costello. So long. Looks like he's got company already. <laughs> what a raggedy individual. What are you in here for, partner? Huh? Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't realize you were talking to me. Thank you for calling me partner. Those are the first kind words I've heard in years. You have a very kind face, little man. Sort of an open one. You see, I haven't always been a raggedy, scurving looking outcast like you. <laughs> if you have some measure of intelligence, my story might interest you. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I went to school last year. Did you pass your examination? No, sir. But I was first on the list of those that failed. <laughs> Very well, I'll tell you my story. I don't care to hear it. Well, and I will positively tell it to you. When I was a boy, my father gave me the benefit of a very good education. Eight years at preparatory school and college. I worked hard and diligently. I soon became a success and settled down in a small and thriving community. And then I met her. We were married. The good gods of fortune smiled down upon us and blessed us with a baby boy. A boy, mind you. And I haven't seen my boy since this very day. You haven't seen your little boy no, from sir. that day until this? No, sir. Wait a minute. Did he, did he have curly black hair? Yes. And, and did he have little blue eyes? Yes, yes. And, and did he have two little teeth in his mouth? Yes. Papa! <laughs> I worked harder than ever for my little family. And then one day, the other man came into my life. He was a poor man, broken in health and spirit. I welcomed him into my home gladly. I said, make my home your home. And he did. <laughs> oh, you poor man. One day I returned from work to find that home was no longer home. Do you know what it was? Third base? No. <laughs> Shortstop? No. Second base? No. My home was an empty shell. My wife, the baby, and the stranger had fled. Then I started a search that lasted for years. I followed them around the world. Honolulu, China, Singapore, India. Then one day on the banks of the river Pocomoco, I found him. When I saw him standing there, all the hatred, all the pent-up emotion of years suffering dwelled up within me. So with murder in my heart, Shalom, I found Step by step, step by step, I have crept upon him. And when I felt his vile breath upon my cheek, I struck. Heaven! 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 Get me out of here, Heaven! 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 Get me out of here. Come here, come on. Costello. <laughs> Costello, what are you doing down there on the floor? Get me out of here, Get Heaven! Get off that floor. Get up. Maybe the, maybe the man wants to talk to you. Now don't call me unless you want. Oh, God, Zooks. What have I done? Yeah, what haven't you done? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I remember you now. You're the little man with the kind face. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to hurt you. But every time I hear the word Pocomoco, I want to kill. That's all right, pal. I know how you feel. I would have done the same thing if I'd have seen that nasty man in Poco. Uh, I didn't say it! I didn't say it. You didn't hear me say it. What did you say? Pocomoco. Pocomoco! I said it! I couldn't help myself when I heard the word. I wanted to see his bottles in between my fingers. So slowly I tried. Step by step. Step by step, I crept upon him, and when I saw the spike upon his countenance, I struck. Come on! Come on! Come 
Costello, what are you doing on that floor? Oh, I put you in here out. to keep the man company. Get me out. Get up. Abbott, would... get me out. Come on, get up. Here comes the warden. Mr. Um, Costello, I have here your release. You've been completely exonerated, and you may leave the jail at once. Well, Costello, shake hands with your old cellmate, and let's get going. Not me. I don't think I'd better go near that guy, Abbott. He eats too many Wheaties. <laughs> oh, nonsense. He looks like a nice old man. He might have been a nice old man once, but something must have happened to him at Poco. <laughs> I didn't say it! <laughs> this guy's trying to get me to say that word, Abbott, and what, I don't want to what, say it. What word? The word. What word is that? Sounds like Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas! Pocahontas! <laughs> what word are you worrying about? What is it? It sounds like Pocahontas. Well, what is it? Pocomoco! Pocomoco! <laughs> Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Lieutenant Betty Barry of Forest Hills, Long Island. Just awarded the Air Medal for meritorious achievement in the China India Burma Theater. She is one of the first women in this area to be given this coveted decoration. In your honor, Lieutenant Barry, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000. Camel cigarettes. Each of the three Camel radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are fighting, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, you had a pretty rough time tonight. How about coming out to my house for some refreshments? Gee, Abbott, yeah. Where do you live? Uh, 2964 Pocomoco Street. Pocomoco! <laughs> Slow Get me out! Good night, folks. Good, Good night. night, everybody. Good night to Anne. Good night, everybody. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. 